Great. Good evening and welcome back to another Vector 3D live stream where we're building a Voron 2.4. Ta-da! <laughs> we're getting there. Do have to remind you that the series of live streams are sponsored by LDM Motors 123D and Big Tree Tech because they supplied parts for this build. So now without faffing around anymore, we've got quite a bit to actually get on with. Uh, it felt like last time we made a lot of progress and we were nearly finished, but of course there's still skirts, electronics, side panels, all of the wiring. There's a lot to do. So we'd better get on with it. So yes, good evening everyone. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. And we do also have a giveaway today. I'm not sure which one to do. I need to cross off the ones that we've done. I've got a special list. Uh, which should we do? What should we do with the drunken sailor? I think as we're going to be doing electronics this episode, uh, at least in part, probably, hopefully. <laughs> I think it's only right that we do a Big Tree Tech giveaway. So we have the Manta M8P and a Pi 4B and CB1. So the Pi 4B and CB1 comes as like together, and then the Manta M8P comes separately. If you don't know, these are both absolutely spanking brand new products from Big Tree Tech. The Manta M8P is like a newer version, I guess it's like the next generation of like the octopus board. So it's like got eight drivers, it has integration with their special Raspberry Pi replacement board, which is the Pi, do they call it the Pi 4B, I think? Or is that the adapter? I forget which one's which. But yeah, it's an absolute monster brand new control board. I suggest you go look it up. Their website's probably a pretty good place to do that. But yeah, the if you look up Big Tree Tech Manta M8P, I'll put it in chat. Oh, I've got to do the link and stuff for all the giveaway as well, otherwise it's not going to work very well, is it? Let's do that. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Oh. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. Accidentally pressed enter. So the Pi 4B, I should let you know, is not a Raspberry Pi product. It's a Big Tree Tech product. It's a like a Pi replacement kind of board. You see, yeah, the CB1. Let me get their website as well. So you can go look them up. So I don't think I can, I don't know how much stuff I can put in a single, hopefully it'll shorten the URLs. Oh dear. You can't do multi-line entries. So you've got the Manta M8P as one thing, and then the CB1 plus Pi 4B is another thing. 
Oh, there's max 200 characters. Oh dear, okay, we're not gonna be able to do full length. You'll have to find them on the website. Yeah, the, the Manta MAP is absolutely, I mean, both of these products are absolutely crazily good by the looks of it. I've obviously not used them, so like, I can't say whether they actually work or anything like that, but I, I'm pretty trustworthy of Big Tree Tech at this point. They've done a lot of good things. They certainly have a very exciting feature set, let's put it that way. So the Pi 4B adapter allows you to adapt their computing, the like, the compute module to the Raspberry Pi 4 form factor. Whereas the M8P is like the full blown control board with a space on it for that compute module to go. So you can have like your Raspberry Pi and that all in one thing, all on the control board with eight drivers. You basically have all the things you ever want all on one control board. Absolutely craziness. I believe they also have ports for four pin fans. I might be wrong there. Connectivity, BL touch, RGB lights, the board to board connector for CM4, selectable fan voltage between 5, 12, and 24 volts. They have a 5 amp trip, TPS 5450 for 5 amps to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, um, STM32 chip, obviously, uh, do, 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 do. and then the CB1 is the Cortex-A53 with a gigabyte of DDR3 memory. It's just craziness. Weird how they're actually like, if you look on the project page, they're actually like preparing their own Pico product and saying, oh, that's the conventional way. This is the new way. And that was not even a few months ago that that was released, was it? So there's a, an M4P as well, which we're not giving away today. The M81, the M8P is what we're giving away. So yes, I think pretty exciting. So, in terms of what we're actually going to do with the live streaming today, I did out, I printed off some of the um, spaces between the previous stream and this one, but while sitting here sort of thinking of things as the stream was, uh, well, I was getting ready for the stream, I've noticed that we may have a bit of a problem with the way I was hoping to implement this. So let's see if I can show you. Uh, not easy from this angle. Up you go. So at the back here, at some point we will have a drag chain which sits between this extrusion and this extrusion. Obviously this one comes quite a long way back. So there's not much room here. 
and the drag chain goes down this space to take all the cables from the motors, the end stops or whatever, and the tool head all back down into the basement compartment below. The, oh, oh yes, I've not tightened the belts. Um, the challenge is that with this board on the back of here, we really need this wiring to be basically flush with the back of this extrusion. Otherwise it may collide with the drag, uh, the drag chain that we use in this bit that I just explained. So, obviously there's like a few things like, can you put the control board in a different place? In its current form factor, I don't think there's room for it to go anywhere else. Can we support it differently using this adapter? No, but I think what we're gonna to have to do is design at some point a different adapter because I need this PCB to sit really quite close to this motor, which is not gonna be great for airflow or cooling either. But shouldn't the motor be 180 degree rotated? I mean, the motor's going to operate the same regardless of which way it's facing. It may be easier if it's the other way. I'm not sure. Yes, I suppose with many setups that would probably be easier. The question is, what do I do about it now? Do we go ahead and try and wire this to the PCB, assuming that we'll find a way to get it working eventually? Do I have to redesign a bracket? Do I do that now? Do I do it between streams? Can we get it more rigid? It's just a lot of questioning my choices. I hadn't particularly checked that all these things work together when I requested them. <laughs> saw that there were sort of modifications available but didn't inquire any further than that. So this, this is where the heart PCB would normally sit in this area in here. So there is, I mean there's more space in there. I don't think we're going to get that whole PCB in there though. It's just not going to fit in that form factor. Hmm. I just wonder if I can find that PCB and have a look at what it's like. So this would be the tool headboard, which would go in there. And obviously that would not be here. That would sit in like that, somewhere around there. So the fact that this sticks out this far indicates that we might have some space here, but not very much at all. What we want is a can board like that in a form factor like this. That would be perfect. <laughs> Until then, oops, it is it. Why is that on the back? How does is there space for that when it's in there? Oh, it would be there. I suppose that's the motor one, isn't it? Yeah, so it would go over the top straight to there. Why 
What do we do? What do we do? I think what I need to do, I need to know that this is not going to fit. So we need to go ahead and carry on with the rest of the electronics and get the drag chain sorted. Jason, $25, thank you very much. It's almost there. Nice stream for 2.4 building. Can bus tool head look nice there? Hope it worked well too. It does look nice. If we can work out the space claim and get enough space in there for it to not clash with the Z chain, that'll be even better. Have you tried pinting PTG on your 2.4? And if so, any issues? Uh, I did do it on with the P, on my uh, review. I don't recall off the top of my head if I did a lot of PTG. You probably could. You may want to remove some side panels and stuff. You probably don't want it too hot, but you could probably manage. I think we're going to carry on. We're going to ignore this tool head for now. Well, not ignore it, but we're not going to be able to progress that uh, knowing what's going to work and what's not until we've uh, could the PCB go on top? Yes, I think it will need to be a little bit more customised. The downside is because Stealth Burner's not released yet, I don't have good CAD details of the rear here. Uh, obviously the space is pretty tight, so it's kind of important to make sure we don't miss things out. Um, but at the same time, whatever, it, whatever the solution is, it's gonna be very close. So ideally I need the models of the surrounding things in order to know what space is actually available. And I'm also concerned that this CAN board has a processor on it as well as a stepper driver. And being quite small, it will probably get quite warm and put it next, next to a hot stepper motor, it's probably not going to help that situation. Is the CAN board a requirement for Stealth Burner? No, 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 not at all. You can just wire all of these directly into the drag chain and go straight back to the control board, or you can use a tool head board like this, which is, uh, there's no controller or anything like special in here. It's basically just wires and connectors. And that will allow you to have short wires that you can maintain here and then permanent wiring back to the control board. Will it survive an enclosure? Exactly. Whoop. There's lots of things going on in my head and I know there's not much coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Hi Nitrum, Nitrum. Uh, I tell you what, seeing as I'm not decided on exactly what to do there yet, I think we'll go do some electronicsy stuff, and then at least we're making some progress. We can come and take a look at that again when we're out of position with the maybe drag chain and stuff installed at a later point. We've got plenty of other challenges to overcome in the meantime. And I think the, the key to overcoming the challenges is to find them as soon as possible, and then we can find a way to overcome them at a similar time schedule, rather than doing one and spending ages on it. So it's time to try and fit all the electronics that we have into the base. A heat sink and active cooling fan. It would definitely help, <laughs> but where do you put it? <laughs> Integrate it on the top. For now, I think we're gonna flip the printer over 
and we're going to have a go at some of the electronics underneath. Immediately touched the rails and got all over my hands. Could do a Vorden Tridont. Tri tri tridont. The new caliper I bought, the old one, will I get the updated one? Yes, if you log into your account, you get the newest cauliflower. Um, so. Oh dear, there's a lot of things to do. Let's do them in some sort of order. This is Raspberry Pi. Where's the Raspberry Pi? I'm pretty sure I had a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> I have to go and get a, a Raspberry Pi. In my box of Raspberry Pis. Three B plus, and that should do the trick. That's a pie mount. That's a, I think this is, this like, there was a download for a more rigid pie mount, so that's, I think, what that is. And that's a, no, no idea what that is. That's too small for a Raspberry Pi. That's a drag chain mount. That's some Wego mounts. This is power supply mounts, because I've done some custom power supply mounts, which we can test out. Maybe now, today. This is something we're not using. This is for that screen. So that is, I think that's for the 12864, I think that's the name of it. Style. Okay, so we need some screws. Not sure if we're going to have enough of these because we've got some extra components compared to a standard kit, so. The can adapter, I have a, another Big Tree Tech USB can adapter board. I'm pretty sure I just looked at this and it worked. Uh, 
I'm so confused. So this definitely goes on here. You can't see, but it shit. Yeah, it's barely fitting. It's really bent. I think these can rails might be extra wide British version. Okay, this one looks a little bit bendy when it's on here. Ow! Maybe it'll be okay. So those go on there, that go on there, and then we get that mounted this way around. Okay, so this is number one, numero uno. That's very, very secure. Ow, that's stabby. So we'll find somewhere for that to go at some point. Five volt power supply. I have not arranged a five volt power supply at the moment, so I'll probably use the one on the octopus and make myself a cable. Power supplies. This way it also gets extra interesting. <laughs> interesting, I mean, we're making it up. MAP does look cool, doesn't it? It's such an awesome looking board. Some seriously awesome features. What am I looking for? <laughs> Power supplies, they're not there. So, because we have some 20, uh, 48 volt drivers and we have to control the board with 24 volts, we are using two power supplies. Now, while they're a bit smaller than the normal power supplies, having two of them is still a challenge. Um, it's, not, it's not the world's biggest challenge, 
but normally you'd mount them uh, kind of a long way like this and you can see if we did two of those we've used up an entire rail just for power supplies so what I've tried to design here but obviously not tested because I didn't have a printer to test it on is some brackets which are basically the same as these clips they're just super elongated which will make them super stiff but hopefully that's okay and that will mean we can mount the two like this next to each other and still have all of that room for other stuff and things so hopefully fingers are crossed we can mount these to these now I think I might have planned to use some threaded inserts here so we might need to sort that out um, let's check the size of these holes so they fit a threaded insert yes I think I meant to threaded insert these so let's get that out Yes, new Manta board is a giveaway. <laughs> it's pretty epic, isn't it? Good luck, everyone. This is going to take a little bit to warm up. It smells a bit funky. Are you doing primary as black? Uh, I didn't really follow the specific colour scheme. I just printed, I mean I did mostly, but when it comes to electronics compartment I sort of just did my own thing however I fancied doing it. <laughs> one two Right, so hopefully we should be able to get those onto there and this one on this end. Uh, which way around does that go? This way. And then we've got some slots there for some adjustment and hopefully that will then be able to grip on this thing. Right. Is this the I think it's here. I think I know what you mean, because I, I saw this hole.
I'd probably have to do it another time. But is it? Oh, if it's desk space problems. Is it this one in here? Oh, you can't see. Where can you see? The one on this red bit here. Ouch. Just in there. I think that looks like it would have one from the other side. Set the maximum extruder gear mesh. Helps prevent gear binding. Looks like that would be where it would go for something for doing a thing such as that. Yeah, I won't do it now. That's probably an off-stream job. So it doesn't really matter too much which way around I put these. In fact, I can just start them off of here. In fact, shorter screws probably better here, but because that's going to prevent that if that's too much. Hmm. We'll have to find out. So that's one side in theory. Now we just have to do the other side uh, with this, which is going to need this. Going to need a much longer screws. Much, much longer screws. I'm just going to use random screws out of these. Oh, it's a daisy. Is that going to be... That's going to be too long. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not too long, but it's much longer than it needs to be. Have we got... 10, 12... 16? 16s. And then I would quite like some washers, but that might be too much to ask for.
Okie dokie, let's see if that worked. Hopefully, with a bit of luck, we put that on and that over there. It's not even close. <laughs> How did I get that so far off? It obviously moved quite a lot when I moved it. Ideally, I want to be able to tighten it while it's on here, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Due to the angles. Okay, I think that's okay. That's at like maximum reach. Right, does that go? Yes! Look at that! Custom, yeah. Now, uh, the test is, does it fit everywhere? No. Oops, there's it. So, it depends obviously on the alignment of these rails because you'd normally not attach between two rails like this, but if we're gonna keep them up this end, then that's fine. I think that's going to go that way. I'm happy with that. Happy enough anyway. So the grounds, let me get this right. The grounds you end up connecting together, I believe. I've not really considered this up to now. But grounds will ultimately be connected together regardless of what you do because they'll be connected together on a control board. And then you just, do the thing, you just connect some to some and some to the other. The, uh, you only need, so with the Octopus, you can put in 24 volts to all the inputs and just use all 24 volts, that's fine. You still only need 200 watts because the bed is mains powered. But I have, um, the Octopus is capable of up to 60 volts, but that realistically means 48 volt power supplies. So, the reason it has that 60 volt compatibility, or maximum compatibility, say 48 volts, is to be able to use higher voltage for stepper drivers. So I have two stepper drivers, they're TMC5160, they're the easy version, so easy 5160, and they use 48 volts, so we need to be able to supply 48 volts to two stepper drivers. Now, the reality is we do not need 200 watts for two stepper drivers. But this is a 48 volt power supply. A smaller 48 volt power supply would be fine. I just don't have one. I've got this, so I'm using this. That's basically the story in Balamore. <laughs> Need some more nylock nuts. My 
my M3 Nilox are miles away. I've grabbed way more than I need now, but... Never know, might use them somewhere else where I've forgotten I also need nuts. Uh, yes, I do think it's much better to use the guided design than a freehand. For safety, as much as anything, I find it a bit safer to not be holding the soldering iron when you're also like pointing it towards yourself. It's like using a knife like this, like you just don't, if you're doing something with a knife, you do away, so you don't, but with heat set insert, so you're like doing this, and if you were to like slip or miss or something, or it gets too hot or your hands are hold, holding it, like it's just, if you've got the thing, you can do the thing and you can let go of let go of both at any point and you're not in danger. Forty eight volts, two amps is hundred watts per it won't be using a hundred watts per motor. Um This shit, have I done it the wrong way around? Nope, yes, nope, yes. Uh, you do not have to be online for the giveaway. I would prefer that people are here for the giveaway, but you will still get your prize if you are not here. Because, as you say, some people can be here for like two hours and then can't be here for something. And it seems unfair for them to not be able to win when they're here for maybe longer than someone that turns up at the end for five minutes and wins a prize. So, on that basis, Yes, if you need to go, you may go. goes up this way, so hopefully, bang on. So we've got a 48 volt power supply and we've got a 24 volt power supply. What does it suggest next upon the list? 
control ward mounts. And let's see what we can find. So octopus control board mounts because we are using the octopus and I think these are the same yes so two of these two of those pippity bobbity boom easy peasy we've got these U350 oh that's for a UHP power supply so you could do it like this but then they would have them mount it the other way long ways which is not very efficient use of space. So I do this way. We also got these, which are the Wego, Wego what's it? Uh, so you put your Wego terminal in this and then let's snap it on here. Use them before, they're pretty good. Shall be using those again. Oh, we can do some heated, threaded hinge shirts in these. Don't think these needs it. We do have to do some soldering at some point as well today, probably. Oh, it is three. Why did I get to it? Blind. That was a bat. some self-tapping screws. Now is this going to be using these for this? No, so that's going to be the M3s. But we can put these onto here. Now how do these attach? One goes this way. Are these identical? No, so that's another thing. So that way, that would make sense because that then puts it about in the middle. So two of those, and then we can get our Octopus Pro, another absolute monster of a control board. 
We've got some stepper drivers here. What a beast. I'm assuming it's the same layout. As the octopus, so the whole pattern's the same. Yes. Uh, before we go and get everything in and mounted, I am going to run through some of the setup for this because I think that's going to be necessary. So I don't know where it is, but I'll find it right now. <laughs> Shall nip over to the Big Tree Tech GitHub page. go so go to the repositories you can see Manta staff CB1 MAP all the new stuff's just been uploaded so we go here we go octopus and then we should find normal and pro uh, there you go this is probably the key bit to look at the voltage of all eight drivers can be selected by the jumper as the jumper is inserted on the left. The corresponding driver voltage is motor power. It is mains power if it's inserted on the right. The motor power port maximum voltage is 60. The main power port is only 28. Or normally would be 24. The all, the all eight drivers? All eight drivers of this motherboard can be used in any combination of motor power or main power. Please make sure that the correct voltage is selected by the jumper in order to use the non-high voltage version of the driver. Otherwise the driver will be burned and even the motherboard may be burned. This is STM32F446. My understanding is it's a, like a version 1.1, so mine's actually slightly newer than the design you can see on the screen. You can see mine's got this red cover on the end, and I think the layout is a little bit, a little bit different perhaps. Maybe there's something different in there somewhere. Somebody pointed it out before, but I can't remember what it is. So, I'm not sure which ones we're going to use for what. We've got an X, we need to do an X, a Y, an E, and then a Z, a Z, a Z, and a Z. So you have one spare. I just don't know which one the, the configuration is set up to use. So I think there's also... I think they might have done a little wiring diagram. I mean, it doesn't really matter where I, where I do them because I can always rearrange what goes where. The wiring diagram is just everything possible plugged in. So it just depends what I want to do. Do 
So what do I want to do? Z, 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 Z. And normally you do X, Y, Z, E, don't you? So I think we'll do the first two as X and Y. So we'll switch these two over to the main power. I mean to the motor power, which will be 48 volts when that gets plugged in. Might be useful to have some tweezers for this. So that's those two. And then we've got to deal with these headers under here too, I think. Um, maybe there's a more manual. Motor zero and motor one are A and B for 48 volts. This is what I have selected. Good. Uh, that's not something I can read. So we've got features, parameters, wiring. Power wiring, motor, motherboard, bed, and bed out. Auto power down. I actually have one of these. I could put that in. BL touch wiring, power loss recovery module, RGB LEDs, Raspberry Pi. Could do this. Temp direction. So you normally do these for, yeah. Step direction mode, the pinout can be described as per the table below. When using UART mode, connect the jumpers between beneath that driver as shown in the image below. Or SPI mode. When using a driver in SPI mode, connect the jumpers beneath that driver as shown in the image below. I always forget whether we're using, I think it's UART that we use for maximum features. So we've got a bunch of these to remove. Fifty-one sixty RSPI. Oh, okay, okay. Shows what I know, doesn't it? Why are you so complicated? Leave them all in for the first two, and then after that, we'll take out three. I'm going to do it for all of them, even though we're not going to be using all of them, just so, regardless of where I put them, we're prepared. jumpers. There's also an alternative fuse here. This is 20 amp fuse. The ones that are in there are 15 amps. I'm not sure why you would want a separate 20 amp fuse. So now we've got those in, we can work in these two drivers. So we've got these nice, uh, easy drivers. I mean, in this configuration, they're, I suppose, technically not as easy. In fact, they're not as, well, they're less easy. 
but future planning and all, they will become easier when they have full compatibility with the motherboard. But one had to come first. It makes sense for the drivers to come first with an adapter. I just gotta find the rest of the drivers. Don't have to install all these now really, but I think we might as well. Ah, we also don't necessarily need a driver for E, the extruder, because we have the CAN board, maybe, probably. So maybe we'll leave that one out for now. X, Y, Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, E. So we'll just do some Why should I change the fuse? Uh, do I need to keep reading instructions? For powering, check the driver is connected to the right side. All the fan outputs and proximity sensor input can individually have the bulbs to the power. Do -do 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 so we're selected for 24 volts. Uh, I haven't checked the voltage of my fans at the moment. Oh, they're already installed, two of them. Uh, we can check that reasonably quickly. Pretty sure these are both 24 volts. Better safe than sorry. That's 24 volts, that one's 24 volts, so that's worth knowing. Since the jumpers carry a voltage rail directly from one of the regulators or from the input, you short the jumpers in any way other than showing connections, you will likely cause damage. Stool guard jumper settings. The diag jumpers, which I use to connect the diagnostic output pin to the end stop input drivers for drivers which support the stool guard feature, can be found in the location shown. The exact diag numbering can be found by looking at the pins file or the SIP screen beneath the board. So that's if you're using sensorless homing, or just want to enable stool guard, I guess. The octopus can be powered using the USB-C port by inserting the jumper as shown. PT100, PT1000 dip switches. PT100 amplifier supports two, three, and four pin wire connection to the board. However, the dip switch needs to be configured for the setup. If you are using a three wire arrangement, no, we're not using those. Connectors, motherboard pins, communicating, Firmware, do, 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 precautions. Uh, there's no big disadvantages. It's, put it this way, it's not going to cause more power to be provided than is what's required. It's not going to overload your components because you've got a higher power supply. Higher power power supply. Higher power, yeah, you know, a higher power power supply. Power power. And 
and then we've got this one left over, which I guess we can just leave. We'll put it in if we end up using that. So these only go in one way. Like so. They're actually very different size for some reason. Are they? Maybe it's just my brain. No, they look different. Yeah, the 5160s are super chungus. Can you tell? Can you can you tell what it is yet? Uh, yeah, these are the two 5160s. You can see they're much fatter. Interest of trying to keep size to a minimum and a minimum minimum. Let's get that in the bin. Get a rub. Rip headphone users. <laughs> Rubber ducky. Oh, that looks cool, didn't it? With all the labelling as well. Right, the confusion continues. Let's just double check this 5160 SPI. TMC 51. Uh, not that I Why use easy dry? Oh, let's have a. I was just looking for the specs, but this is quite interesting, maybe. So that one you can damage the pins, you can insert the wrong way around, whereas this is. you can't insert the wrong way, or it's noticeable because it doesn't go in properly if you insert it the wrong way. Turn one driver and seat saying deliver silent motion. Do -do 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 -do. Easy to install. Two installation methods. Method two dedicated motion. Do -do 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 High durability. Perfect match for 57 stepper motors. I think it was 57 millimeter. Product parameters 5160 Pro. Oh, they just called them easy. 5160 uses a TMC 5160. Supports up to 48 volts. Max current of 2.5 amps. Yeah, so max current 2.5 amps at 48 volts. That is mental. Operation mode SPI. And then TMC 2209 uses UR. Thank you, Polaris, for getting me that. Remove the stool guard jumpers. There are no jumpers on the stool guard pins for me. So you removed ones that were there. I don't have them there currently. So we have stealth chart, spread cycle and stool guard support. I don't think I'm planning to use stool guard particularly. That's senseless homing. Stool guard is the like trademark name from TMC. What's the name of, what's TMC stand for? Forgotten.
So yeah, that's all the different things about those. We're really just here for those specs, but now we've got other stuff too. Right. Let's melt this onto this. Uh, probably some like short M3 or H3. This is the downside of these electrical doodads. I just feel like there's a little bit less control. Oh, that's just snapped. I think we're okay. Come on. Oh, it's snapped again. It's snapped in a place that kind of won't matter. It's um it's basically on on this it's snapped at the interface like here along here, so this like top part is sort of not attached to the main part. I mean it's still mostly attached, it only had a little snap but Maybe this ABS Pro that I've used is a little bit more brittle than ABS. And therefore has... And maybe this is just a little bit more prone to the breakage. If I was smart, I'd have like drilled them out to a good size first. But no. So I'm pretty sure I know where I want these control board and stuff already because I'm going to probably try and do it similar-ish to the last one. Oh no, the, the power supply layout has totally changed so I'll probably have to change the layout of everything else as well. And those stepper drivers are super tall. Oh, this is going to get super in the way today. Hopefully we don't have to do many more threaded inserts. Although now that I'm going to move it, I'll probably find some immediately that I need to do. I also know I'm going to be doing some soldering, so we will need it back. So, yeah, I think last time I put it up here. Take it on there. So, the good, uh, the good thing about having it over here was that the fans were here and it flows out like this. I mean, I think this would be really nice because with the fan blowing this way, with the drivers like this, that would give the most cooling. Knowing that the XY is probably going to be the hottest in this scenario, this might be best. But we don't really want those power connectors facing that way because that power is coming from over here. So, yeah. <laughs> I think we want it there. That would be ideal. But I think the best we're going to get is this. 
which is what we did before. These, darn it, they do not want to go in. I feel like my din rails are like extra thick or something, extra wide. It's not going in at all. It's bending too much and also not bending enough at the same time. <laughs> it's close. I think we'll leave it off for now. We'll uh, deal with attaching stuff later. Let's get everything prepared first and then we can do our layout and then get everything secured. Oh look, power inlet. <laughs> Just as I had put the, the insert thing away. Solid state relay, let's do that one next, that's an easy one. by six screws for this one and five and four here we go so what just gonna fix two point five perfect Around there. I'm assuming the reason this uses a metal bracket rather than just doing another plastic one is that you get the grounding effect, so you get that continuity between whatever the ground plate of this is and the ground of the printer. So that may be somewhere. Here, this is pretty easy to attach and detach. It look, why does it look really wonky on the screen? It doesn't look wonky to me, and it looks wonky on the screen. That's bizarre. It looks super wonky. What a weird illusion. To my eyes here, that looks dead straight. On the camera, it looks weird and wobbly and wonky. Okay, well, there you go. It does look a bit weird, but I think it's okay. Uh, end stop, this is some weird funkiness. Let's have a go at this. Oh, this requires soldering. I think my PCB for this is not assembled because I bought a non-assembled one. So we also need to do some assembly for some other things, so let's do that now. We need those. We've got our power switch already pretty much ready to go. End stops. So we've got two end stop PCBs here. Neither of them are assembled, so we're going to be assembling them now. At least I'm going to try. I've not done them before, but they don't look too complicated, so hopefully I can do them without making a mess of it. Easier said than done. 
So let's get that. I need some solder. I need a soldering iron for soldering around. <laughs> Been off for a little while, so it should be reasonably cold. Uh, yeah, it is cold. Uh, we'll use this tip. So, this is our PCB situation. So there's two lots here. So this is the A, B or X, Y rather. So I believe they have to go on there something like that. Or it might be this way up, we'll check in a second. And then this goes on this side like so, something like that. And then this goes on here. That screws to there like that. And that goes there, that goes there. And that goes under there. And that's your end stop assembly. And then this one, I believe they both go on the top. Here, yeah, we'll check direction in a second. One like that, one like that. And that's all there is to it. So it should be pretty simple to do, as long as we get them in the right place. Right. Before we do that, End stop pulling tool we'll need in a minute. I'm going to look for the end stop brackety piece. Where is the brackety piece? The little end stop block. I think I've gone past it. <laughs> oh, it's in here. Oh, I bet I got it out earlier or something, but I didn't know. I just looked at it. in here of course it is. So this will just help us make sure that when we this is not the right thing. This is not the right thing. This is the original end stop design. Where's my modified one that I printed? Oh, come on. Can't catch a break. So normally for the old design you'd put this up here like this. Something Maybe the other way around. Yep. But we have a slightly different design here. Which has a PCB. But I've lost the thing for doing it. Too many mods, not enough organisation, and I can't find the thing what I need. I mean, it's entirely possible that I just forgot to print the modified one. Yep, just think I miss printing the modded one. So we'll need to print that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, I've just not printed it. It's a bit silly of me. 
I don't know which way around this is going to go. It looks like that way because that puts the switch right in the middle. I guess we can just do it that way. And let's get the soldering iron hot. So the way I normally do these kind of soldering jobs is to do one pin and then you can easily remelt it and reposition if you need to. Whereas as soon as you do two, it's very difficult to get both of those molten enough to then move that component. So. Do not consider this a soldering tutorial. I know how passionate people get about soldering on the internet. That's made it worse. This is why I want the printed part, because if we have the printed part, we can be sure that it fit. Oh no, I'm just making a mess of that now. <laughs> Ah, man, let's find the printed part. Hopefully we'll find it in here. There you go. There's that, there's this, and then we need the STLs, we can do refresh, tick, 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 download, this is a, an add-on by the way, it's not default functionality, but I find it super useful, so we should have the V0 ready to go. always like my ready to go printer it's just brilliant so we need to print so we've got three files in this thing I don't know why that one's wonky. Z and stop PCB top new. Why is it wonky? It's wonky by default. It's a bit shorter, slightly different design. So I guess we'll do one of those and one of those, please. I don't know why it's weird and wonky. <laughs> There's probably a good reason. I just don't know what it is. Oh no, that's on the 2.4. That won't work because it doesn't have a bed. Oh, 
Tesi. Oh dear, that's got to be painful. Jokery, jokery. Right, there's that one coming. So you can sort that when that arrives. This one, it's probably going to be equally, if not more difficult. Might be easier if we put this on here first, because I think that will then rest at a nice height. It's not perfect, but might be a touch easier. Weirdly, the holes do not line up. Those ones line up. Back to get how we go, have a look at which way around the switches go. Um, okay, switch and stop. So this is the original design. This one has levers, but it doesn't have levers now. But the little things will still be in the right place, so this actually goes that side, and that one goes that way. Right, let's try putting this board on here. Yeah, I had that problem, I think, with the first one as well. It looks like the improved design is shorter, though. These don't quite fit. I think what we will do is if I take this and put this in this gap and then push the switch down on it, it will hold in place while I do said soldering. There you go, that looks pretty good. That should hold the, the, the glue tack. The blue tack will get a, a little warm, but hopefully it will be all right. It's a big old pad, this.
Might have got a bit overkill with the actual solder itself, but we're definitely on there. We'll do the same trick with this one. I'll just use a little bit under here as well. It just helps the stops the whole thing sliding away while you're trying to solder. Right, and then the last thing we need, oh, what a gross mess. These four pins, again, we'll just jam some blue tack in there. <laughs> Take this out of here. Where's the goop? This is blue tack. Blue tack's not a weird British thing, is it? I thought everywhere has blue tack. Get the uh, blue tack out of the holes. Oh, no, that's too big. Just want to slide something through to clean it out. Sim eject tool. That's probably small enough. Yeah. Oh, is it gone? Where was it? And considered how much we get stuck in the holes when I thought of putting it on there. But it's not too bad, we managed to work that out. Tacky putty, yes, well that's literally a description of what it is, isn't it? this to go straight.
that's pretty blooming straight. Just to go in here too. Again, not super easy to solder on to because reasons. Are we going to be able to do it using our six fingers? There we go. I'm reasonably happy that this is going to be square enough. Righty ho. So we can definitely assemble this one. Now, I believe there would be screws, but there's not screws. So we should just mount it directly. <laughs> hey! My soldering is perfectly adequate, thank you. <laughs> I pride myself on being perfectly adequate. Cool, there we go. Doop -doop 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 -doop. Now I don't actually have a harness or anything either, so <laughs> I have to make all the wires myself. This is going to take a long time. Oh, that's a bit of extra blue tack. Must have got a bit melty. Weirdly, even the standard instructions, oh, the standard instructions are using, oh no, this is not PCB, is it? What a fool. Well, the V0 has just started the actual print that's been heating up, so. Oh, here's the PCB one. There you go, and that's a link to the actual design. Oh my goodness, why did I not get that sooner? Okay, so 
we do have to do this pulley removal thing. We have the pulley removal tool, so as far as I remember, it's very, very easy to do. But we have a little jig to help us anyway. So all we want to do is remove this top flange here. Cool correctly, we also don't need any grub screws because we're not grabbing with this, it's just a shaft. So, no idea what that's for, but I think this goes in here, this goes in there, and then this comes out here, that goes in there, that goes, uh, that goes this side. That goes in there, so that's our tool all set up. And then we close the door, boom. We do a little bit of the turny turny with the doobly doobly. And before you know it, it's done. Nice and clean, no stress, no fuss, no worries. Then we can put that back in there, this back in here. And that can probably just go Don's Le Bin. Use the bottle opener like a caveman. <laughs> so well, it's nearly two hours. I don't feel like I've done anything yet. <laughs> uh, is that just like? Does that seem like all my streams to everyone else? Well, I, I seem to be doing stuff for two hours and then never make any progress. We've got another shaft. This is what triggers the switch. This is the oiliest bag of things ever. I don't know why, because they're all chrome plated. Oh. Well, I get about, I mean, I get these three hour streams a couple of nights a week. That's about how much time I have to do it. No rush. So that goes in there. That goes on here. Nozzle touchy this. That press the end stop. So this is really literally just here to hold this shaft and it does hold it. Very nice and smooth. The tolerance thing is just perfect for it to slide up and down. If I had the PCB, we could assemble that, but I don't, so we can't. Uh, to stop this coming over here, oh, I put that grub screw in backwards. You absolute numpty. to small for now we'll put that on there and we'll grip that to that so we don't lose anything 
Now, we haven't done this yet. We need to do that. M3 nuts, M3 by 20, can't quite do that yet. Oh, because the the piece that I have here is not for the, I don't know, modif option X, Y, N stop board. Maybe it is slightly taller, the, the modified one. It looks the same. It's one of those ones that looks the same that's not the same, maybe. We can put this on, though. We can assemble a thing. Look, everyone, we're going to do a thing. Where is the thing? It's over the other side. Let's make sure I get the camera in a way that you can see the thing. Otherwise, we spent all this time and you won't even see the thing. It's not an easy thing to be able to see because it's on the far side for me. I can barely reach that. So that's going to go where? On there. Certainly looketh like that, doesn't it? Because it's not going to go that way round. So it must be like this. So we need our M3 by 30 screws. M3 by 20, M3 by 30. Which spinny things are you talking about? This big spinny thing. Uh, you've got to make one. I made a video. There's a video on how to make the thing. This is weird. Something tells me these should have the levers on, because these I don't think are quite making contact. Do I have levers on that one? I do. Why do my end stop switches not have any leafers? Cardboard. Yeah, cardboard won't work too well. Have I just soldered completely the wrong switches onto these blooming PCB? Because this doesn't have any lever on it. I feel like this might not work super well. This one has a lever space, but no lever. This one you cannot even put a lever on. Oh, Adam. Oh, Adam. You nump. Numpy, 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 nump. We can give it a go. It might not be very good. Just the position is not going to be ideal. Put a spacer in here quickly, because I want to make sure that this is in a place where it's going to work. We just need to make sure that the 
switch is sticking out beyond everything else. Oh no, that screw's not going in for some reason. Spacer for a thing. One of these cardboard boxes that I used earlier might work. Here we go. Hopefully that's a bit better. Goodness gracious me, why is it not going in? So we need to make sure it's as far down and out as possible. Oh, we still got the stop in the carriage and the Let's take those out. Have it Breathe. Okay. We're all right. I think that's going to be fine. We are leverless, but it should work. Fingers crossed. Go back to insert mode. It's cold, by the way. Well, if this if this board didn't work, I could just take the end stops off. I could like cut them off, unfortunately destroying them, or try and suck the solder off, wick the solder off, whatever, and replace them. Those, or just screw down PCBs and wire them in directly. I mean, it, it, I don't have to switch to all effects to fix it. That would probably just cause me more problems. Uh, right, we're already running low on these just as well. I requested extras. Now, where is this bit? Up here. There we go. So, there's a power switch piece. That's for the display, that's for the display, that's for fans, that's for itches, 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 
sides, edges, edges, back, edges, power supply, power, 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 options, options, display that I'm not using. I also don't need that one, I don't think. That's a power one. This is a different one. Oops. So Mine is not quite as much as is shown on the screen because I'm using a slightly different power for what's it doodah. Mine's all built in one rather than separated. So obviously if you're using the type of switch where they're separated, then you need to do them separately. So I need to decide if I want this in this way round or this way round. I can't remember which way up this goes. I believe that way, it goes this way. So we want Which way is on, on, off, on, off. So we want it that way around. On, off. Uh, the dark gray is uh, ooze nest ABS uh, Pro. I believe they have a the same grey in ABS. I, can't, I think they call it like dark iron grey or something. Probably not going to be using the wires that are here, but they are here. I used this connector on another printer, obviously, a little while back. So that's another thing we can connect in. Instructions wise, that's looking about half done. That's getting there, that's getting there. That's part of that. We go terminal. So I'm not sure if I want to use this one or the one I've used before. I did print one of these off. I'm not sure I like the look of it as much. I'm not sure if it'll be as tidy, tidier or less tidy. Feels, I don't know, is that a good idea having it right at the edge of the print? Right at the edge of the print? Right at the edge of the, you know, place that things happen? Maybe it is. Maybe we'll put this in and then we can take it out if we don't want it. So this is the back down here. We know because that's where this stuff comes through. That's where some main stuff is happening. And we got, we should have a main side. I'm not sure which side is the main side at the moment. I think low is low voltage and A is high voltage but I do forget. I think, no, other way around. So like this.
this is fiddly. So now we've got, we should have all our mains in that area. I think that's all right, that'll work. So, in five minutes. This one up here. This one can go in this way. Pretty much bang on. Was it M5 by 10, I think? This is in the way again. I think you figured out the color scheme for your Voron. What's the colors? We must know. Collected the Wago terminals I'm using it. I have, I definitely have them. So whether I have them right here, or if I have to fetch them, I have to fetch them. Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons in the Splatoon theme. Post a photo. Cool. Neon green base with neon hot pink. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's some serious colour. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, that's what am I going for? Wego terminals. Oh, they should be in this box. And I do not see them. I know. Look at this. Wego's for days. Well, they don't fit. Okay, they sort of do fit. Ow! Oh, I forgot how much they snapped down. Okay, that can work. I'm happy. It's the wrong colour because it's black, but no one will know. They did away go. That's I mean that's tenuous even for me. <laughs> Congratulations, Sebastian. <laughs> At least you did it, that's the main thing. He wants to see Ella's uh, colours. Shall I see if I can, if she's uh, provided the image on the Discord, perhaps I can go grab it. I'm interested, I'm intrigued.
poke that in the corner, but not too far in the corner. Blender render to 24 mags, that's a lot. Cool. Time will tell if I prefer this or the solution I had before. But it at least saves valuable DIN rail space, so. Oh, these are well good, aren't they? Look at that. Plop. 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 <laughs> so we should have mains, 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 mains here. And then low voltage is right at the other end and can do that side. Mm, yes. I need sunglasses to see past what the boron's doing. Um, yes, 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 yes. Instructions, more instructions. Power inlet. M3 nuts. Oops, I did it. Ow! Come on, why does it... Why do these nuts hate me so much? They look like they're in, but they're not. That might be a slight dud, that one. That's not great. Oh, no. Just takes a lot to get them in sometimes. Some of them go in easy, some of them do not. Pinged me on disc. Pin pinged me. Uh, one thing I would say is probably don't go for uh, ESAN ABS Plus. It's uh, not a great. It's come through quite dark, but hopefully, there we go, a green and a pink. <laughs> this is so vibrant. This just added me an upgrade. Icarus mode, original mode. Looks good. Uh, oh yeah, so we're doing this. The power thingy. Uh, I think before we do that, I might deal with this. This, this hot mess. Oh, we, let's put the other nut in. Uh, 
to the Matter Witch away. Probably not. Hmm. Why you be so difficult? So I'm sort of tempted, I mean this is all fine really, and then that's just going to come in, so it's going to fit here, and as long as they can reach down to these then we're fine, so we won't need these terminals on the ends, we can cut these off, but we actually don't need to redo anything here, which is happy days. In fact, it could we even go shorter than that? We've got a live, we've got a neutral, we could definitely go shorter. We've got an earth. What on earth? <laughs> Probably okay. I did recommend ABS. Uh, Esan ABS Plus for a little bit. It prints quite nice. Like, it looks good when it prints and all this kind of stuff, but the, tr the trouble is once you I started assembling with it, it was just falling apart. This is the bit where I need the printer standing up or something. Um, maybe if we just do this. Uh, there we go. And we can do this. Oh, camera. Paul's never had issues. Maybe you've got lucky pool. Maybe it is more sensitive to moisture than other ABS or something. I don't know. I had some that was really good. Like it printed fine and it was, the strength was fine. But I had others that just weren't and I kind of like to know what I'm getting when I get filament, you know? Don't want to be faffing around with printing stuff twice because it was rubbish the first time. Getting this stuff splitting as well now, that's not good. It was just a bit generous with the tightness. Uh, the V0 is just finished. Oh. 
hot, 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 hot. <laughs> Duh. Ah, it's really hot. <laughs> Ouch. I recommend leaving your printer to cool, but not before just touching it, but also before removing it. Because I've sort of wrecked my bed a little bit by not being very careful. I leave it on the rough side up, because the side that I've messed up a little bit, because I know that way that that print is always ready if I'm in a rush and I can just rip it off and I don't have to worry about damaging it more because it's already damaged. And then if I want to do like more nice stuff, I got the other side. And this is how we get this white side. This is going to be really warpy if I'm not careful because it's trez thin. So. I've heard good things about the Prusament ASA. I print ESAM ABS plus, no issues for many of my jigs 24 7 and 105 in heated chamber. 247, oh, 247 as in temperature. Maybe it's just very temperature specific? I don't know. Have I just printed the same thing again? No, that fits, cool. Oh, not only does it fit, it fits like an absolute glove. I mean, there's no way that's fitting on there though. And this is a a job for the safety glasses. I'm going to trim these off. I'm going to be very careful though because they're going to fire. Actually didn't ping across the room. I expected them to go like bullets. Maybe these ones will. Yep. There we go. Might have over tightened that on a little bit. Oops. <laughs> Dipstick. And then we take this, we need to remove or just loosen this scrubby screw. Does this need to go around a specific orientation? I don't think it does, but I do want to check because it might not be easy to get out. Apply the required force to fully seat the pulley in the printed part. Doesn't seem to necessarily demand something specific, but we'll try to line it up to be the same as the picture. Oh, and it fits like an absolute dream. Oh, big sticky 
pointy thing. What a champ. Doesn't want to de-stress those bits. Right. That's that and that and that. Where'd you go? Oh, yes, at the back of the bed. Uh, how easy is that going to be? Hello, Carlos. Hello, Panama. I really have not got the hang of these. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's on the inside. Yeah, this side, isn't it? snap. should fit. Not at all. Even with the modified design it doesn't fit. <laughs> I don't understand. I do not understand. I do not understand. Why can it never fit? So how do we make it fit then? How did I make it fit before? I think I took the plastic plate off the bottom. Although this is a bit dangerous because on this printer, this is not plastic, it's aluminium. Um, yes.
here. I mean, on, on that printer, there's a bit of wiggle room because the panel is not rigid or as rigid, whereas this one, I mean, this is, this is a not a budgeon. What we can do, though, I suppose, is some Kapton tape tomfoolery. But I think the head of the screw is still going to be a problem. We've got to go countersink screws. We really have. I don't think I have tiny countersink screws. I don't really have a proper countersink tool either, which means probably using a drill and hopefully maybe finding something. There's not some countersink screws in this kit, is there? Be chance. Nope. Is there a reason why this can't go any higher? Do I just need to modify the design myself? Or is there other issues with moving all those holes down? I'm not VHB in it, car, oh, you lot. In your dodgy solutions, I don't know. Let's see if I have some random very small screws that I can use. I might be able to find something around. And some M3 countersink screws, but I don't. I think they're going to be just generally too large in every dimension, regardless of what I try and do. I have a box of very tiny screws here. So that's got four of these. The Phillips head, which is the worst ever, but you've got to do what you've got to do. Oh, that's too small. So easy. I've lost it. Ow. I found a random screw. It's 
のは。Yeah, that's the original design. But I think I might have sussed it.、Uh, I've not really sussed it. That sort of works. I mean, it is pushing the panel down, which looks a bit gross. I don't understand why this is a thing. Why does it not fit? Oh, I guess it looks like this can't go up because they want it this part underneath the bed. So if this part can't go up, then you can't move the PCB up because that's a fixed length and touches the switch, which is touching the PCB. I、would need countersink screws to do much about it. What we can try, it'd be kind of dodgy. I don't know what the copper situation is on the bottom of this PCB. We can try drilling a little bit of a hole, just enough. That these rounder head screws. <laughs> Sit a little deeper. That might help us. We're just using the tip of the drill really to make it wider. We don't actually want to drill all the way through. Probably don't want to breathe that. I didn't consider that when I started cutting it. <laughs> That sits definitely lower. Almost flush. Does that look like that's super duper close? Scratching the bottom panel. Round off these. 
protrusions. I don't want to scratch the aluminium. And then once we've got it, <laughs> and then some capped on tape on the bottom to stop any conduction. Conduction? It's not a word. Connection, electrical continuity. And it's going to get a bit hairy if that starts to come unstuck, but hopefully it won't. <laughs> we can double layer it in the middle. going to get this in and we'll do competition. Uh, why do I always say that? We'll do the giveaway. Which is an absolutely epic giveaway thanks to Big Tree Tech, eh? If you don't follow Big Tree Tech on Twitter, I can recommend you do so or Facebook or something because it's really, I think, quite good to keep up with all the stuff that they launch because they're continually bringing new things. So, might be worth going to have a ganders at that. Oh, forgot to drill them. Right, it's not perfect. I think that one's just not even biting. One of these heads of these screws is scratchy. Gotta sound the blooming heads of the blooming screws.
Okie dokie, we're there. Then these can go back in the bag. Oh, the self tapping screws. That will need to go back to where I got it. Those can just go there. Uh, we need M3 by 20s to get this in. Right, excellent. Oh, sorry. There we go, look at that. It's in. It's got some weird tape on the side now, but it is in. I feel like that's the only thing we've achieved today. The printer looks basically the same as it did when we started. <laughs> oh, this electronics is gonna take so long. Uh, quick question, what's the uh, considerations of whether I should do all of it on stream or off stream, live, not live, etc. If I skip bits of wiring and things, is that okay with everyone or would you like me to do it all on live? Because wiring can get a bit slow as you've seen today, as we plan, plan out what we're doing as well. I'll try and do some, I try and make things off camera and then I'll try and put them on the printer live. I think that's probably a good way if I can work that out. Typically it never actually works out like that. Right. I'm going to put on a two minute timer for, oops, it is it. I know three minutes. So you've got three minutes now to apply for anyone that hasn't. So as we looked at earlier, what we're going today is giving away an M8P, the Manta M8P, which is a new control board. Let's give a little overview so I can explain what we're actually giving away. So this is one of them. Well, this is the main prize today, M8P, brand new control board, and it has this like little module area for putting their CB1, well, it looks like CB stands for core board, but it's basically like the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi compute module, and it is compatible with that, or you can use their CB1, which is an alternative to that. Uh, the second thing that we're giving away is the Pi 4. So we get this, which you, so you get the CB1, which is the compute module, and the Pi 4B adapter, which basically adapts that to be a Raspberry Pi sort of thing. It's not a Raspberry Pi, but it's like a Raspberry Pi. Get, this kind of matches the footprint of the Raspberry Pi 4 if you use this, or you can put it straight in a module using the CB1 like compute module thing. So there you go, that's the things that we're giving away. This is kind of how it works. It's pretty fancy. Unfortunately, I'm not getting one for this build, but hopefully at some point I'll get to have a go at one with one as well. So 
so a little bit longer. 47 seconds and then we'll be doing the draw. Well, 47 seconds and then I'll turn off new entries. Try and get 100 likes, we're up to 83 and there's 100 people watching. So just, you know, click that button. Uh, the VCore 3 is behind the camera over there. Up to 94, nearly there. And we're going to be hitting this in just a second. Two, one, there we go. Sorry about the beeping. We have exactly 200 responses. So now I can get these. This is the ones for today. Paste these in here. Excellent. And then I put this back here. Share the screen. There we go, it does better like that. Right. So I see you didn't know what question I was, I was going to ask. Which one do, which should we do the draw on first? Should we do the MAP first draw or should we do the Pi 4B and CB1 on the first draw? These are not both going to the same person. Evidently, this is two separate drawers. We'll do one and then the other. You cannot win both. Big board first, because, okay. Yeah, this make, seems to make sense. I was doing the smallest draw first leading up to the big one before, but I can see why it might be better to have the big one first, because otherwise you might get a small prize and you think you missed out on the big one, you missed out on your chance. Whereas if we do the big one first, then you can still have other things as a consolation prize, sort of thing. I mean, both of these are fantastic, if you ask me, but there you go. So, we'll do the Manta M8P draw first. Now, let's have a number. First person to send me a single digit number for how many mixes, how many shuffles to do before we do the draw. He's gonna get it, he's gonna get it. Five, Ella Foxes. <laughs> Twigs, seven, five, seven, five, two, eight. What was the first one? Five. A one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, go. Ooh. For the banter, Dennis G. Is Dennis G here? No. You didn't have to be here, I was just checking. Congratulations, Dennis G. I shall be emailing. I mean, you're not here, so you won't see me say this, but. Congratulations anyway, if you choose to watch it back. So that's the Manta MAP gone. And then for the Pi 4B and CB1. Let's have one more number. First number, single digit. How many mixes? How many shuffles? Every day we're shuffling. And a fox immediately with nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it doesn't like start spinning again. It normally spins. Go! And we're on. Nolan Murden. Is Nolan here? No. Two people not here. But they are still winners. Congratulations. Lovely good fun. Don't forget to leave a like before you go, if you haven't already. 
the next stream will probably be in two days, Friday evening, or we might skip one. It depends if I get time to do wiring and things. This obviously, I might have to do some designing. If I do have to redesign a mount, do you want to see me do some CAD of that on live stream, or should I just do that myself? I think I'll probably do that myself because it'll probably be pretty slow and boring and repetitive and might be lots of mistakes. So it might be best that I just do that off stream anyway. Anyway, yes, thank you very much. I don't think we'll be doing, so I'm, for this, oh, people are saying yes to CAD. Weird. Um, so the theory is, for, the, for this whole series, I'm going to try and keep the whole series to the same times so that people that have watched some parts of the series can watch all of the parts of the series. It's on like different days and stuff. I have to mix it around um, for my own schedule. But I try not to do like mix and matching. So we'll do some like shorter or other live streams on morning ones and then these are like evening live streams. It's not going to be perfect for everyone, but hopefully it works out for most. Right, cheerio. Thanks very much, everyone. I shall see you in the next live stream. And don't forget to check out my website. Go to my website, vector3d.co.uk. Go there. Goodbye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.